Welcome back. In last week's installment, we got the grain elevator built and assembled most of the detail components. This week, we will get it painted, weathered, install the windows and other detail parts, put some signs on it, and get it back in place on the layout. If you remember from last week, once I glued the head house onto the top of the elevator, the structure became too tall to fit on my workbench. So most of the finishing process had to be done in the room next door, where I was sharing space with the rest of the family and with the TV and all the other distractions. It wasn't the ideal working space, but it was better than nothing. So please bear with me, some segments are of a lower quality than I'm used to producing. So let's follow along and see what I've been up to. Earlier today I primed everything I use grey primer for the main building and the details that go on the roof. I use a pale green for some of the other smaller details like the windows and doors because I'm thinking that would be a, a good colour to leave them finished. I had a drop of water drip off the deck onto my work while I was doing it and, and ruin this door so I'm going to have to strip the paint off that and start again. But I might paint the, the roll-up door silver anyway. The colour scheme for the structure is not going to be particularly interesting because after all concrete is concrete so I've got um, poured concrete and concrete blocks I think I'm going to use a slightly warmer color for the poured concrete than I do for the concrete blocks just to give it two slightly different shades and then of course there's a lot of details that I can pick out in various colors so I am going to get on with that and I will check in with you again later. Welcome back. I spent a couple of days getting the structure painted. There's no weathering on it yet. And of course I had to work out here in the other room. The biggest problem with working here is the poor light. As you can see I've got a couple of desk lamps and I'm restricting my work to daylight hours when I've got some natural light coming from outside. Since it's basically all over grey tones, I use a slightly different shade for the block work as I did for the poured concrete. I decided to do all the machinery in green since that's a fairly common colour for machinery anyway. The ones in the pictures that I worked from were a pale blue, but I had this in a spray can and I was able to match it fairly easily with the uh, brush applied paints as well. And then while I was doing that, I decided to pick out all the details in the same colour and I'm going to use that same colour green in the sign as well so that's going to be a corporate colour now for this company. Anyway I've got to get it weathered and I've got to get all the windows installed. So I'm going to go ahead and get on with that and I will check in with you again later. Well here is the structure after a couple more days. Most of the weathering has been done. I've also got the dust collection systems glued permanently onto the building. When I was checking the photographs for weathering on concrete elevators, I was expecting that most of them would show the same or similar patterns, and I actually found that there seemed to be no rhyme or reason. I got the impression that I could basically do what I want as long as it's not too even. Anyway, uh, with that task completed, I think I'm going to move the structure back into the train room. Next step is to put the glass in the windows and get those installed. So stay tuned and I will check in with you again later. When I finished assembling all the windows, they are titchy windows and they come with the glazing pieces. Originally I thought they were too big but it turns out that, they're, they're, that they are exactly the right size. I've got to make sure that I file off the edges where they are attached to the sprue very, very carefully because there's zero tolerance. So I've got 20 windows 
I've got two of these doors and two of these doors that I scratch built. I also assembled a Titchy coal bin. I thought I was going to put that beside the, the building, but it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. That doesn't really fit very well. So instead, what I'm going to do is put a stack of firewood underneath the staircase. So with that in mind, I bought this eighth inch dowel. It was one piece. I just broke it in half, make it easy to deal with. So I'm going to chop this into scale 16 inch lengths and then split it into scale size firewood and stack it under the staircase. I've painted it dark brown and then lightly dry brushed it with light gray to represent bark. And I think once it's split into scale size pieces, it will look just like firewood. That's the hope anyway. So um, I'm going to go away, get the windows installed and start chopping firewood. Okay, now I think it's time to go off and find an HO scale log splitter. Well, this may look fairly tedious, but it's not as bad as it seems. I found a fairly easy way of getting it to work, just using the knife. I aim to cut the log right in the middle the first time round, and if it does cut fairly symmetrically, I then chop both halves to give me quarter logs. If it goes a little off center, I just chop the larger one again and that seems to give a very reasonable approximation of what I see in full-size firewood piles around here. And of course, it's real hardwood, so no one's gonna be able to complain about the realism of my firewood. Of course, stacking it with a pair of tweezers might be an exercise in frustration. It's not something that I would be interested in doing on a large scale in a background scene. But since this firewood pile will face the viewer fairly near the front of the layout, I think it's worthwhile. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this and I will check in with you again later. Well, to ease the task of stacking the firewood, I'm doing most of it in a couple of sub-assemblies. I've put tape on this block of wood and assembled them against it. The bolster spacer saves me effort on the back layer and this one will hide it. I did these last night and they, they're nicely set up by now. So I'm gonna get these installed and then finish the wood pile in situ. So, there we are, there's the bulk of my wood pile. Well, the structure is back on the layout now. I installed all the doors and windows. This one up here was a bit of fun because that had to be installed from the inside. What I ended up doing was attaching it to the end of my finger on a piece of double-sided tape, which is still in the building attached to the back of the door. It can stay there. I also stacked the firewood pile under the stairs. I had to break the front piece in half to get it past the post. But that was no big deal. I thought I might. And I stuffed as much extra wood in that end as I could. That part isn't stacked as neatly as the rest of it, but I'm not too worried about it. It was very difficult getting in there with the tweezers. And in a real situation like that, the last few logs under the stairs would be more difficult to stack, so maybe they were just thrown in there. Anyway, that is almost two cords of firewood and I didn't even break a sweat while stacking it. I finished the floor of the dump shed. I've got a little bit of a step here which I didn't really want. I'll probably come back and tinker with that to try to get to try to even it out or I might just leave it. I'm guessing if I hadn't pointed it out you wouldn't have noticed anyway. 
I've still got to add um, gutters and downpipes and I need some signs and then I'll come back and finish the weathering. I've already printed out the signs I will show you them in just a moment so hang in there and I will be right back well I've attached my signs I've got them on three sides of the head house on this side where there wasn't a large vacant space I put a billboard on the towers of course two other signs you can't see in this location but I know they're there also I've done some detail work lower down I've got the wooden bumpers against the truck loading dock so that uh, anyone backing a truck up doesn't knock chunks of concrete out I've got gutters and down pipes uh, the gutters were a bit of an experiment what I did was laminate two strips of 10 by 40 styrene with a strip of 20 by 20 in the middle to give it a channel and then scrape the front corner off once that was set up I put end caps on unfortunately when I installed it I just broke this end of the gutter off so I'm gonna have to take it out and uh, redo it the down pipes were done exactly the same as those on the power plant that I showed you recently I had another go at the weathering it's getting there I'll probably come back again in a few more days and hit it again but for now I'm going to just leave that alone and get on with the surrounding scenery well that's all for this week in next week's installment my plan is to get the surrounding scenery done around this new structure so stay tuned and I will see you again then thanks for watching